read last year that you had um, been in talks um, with the other company uh, in your space, INEOS, about potentially uh, mounting a legal challenge based on the disruption that you guys had had to the government. Is that something that you're still considering? I mean, did you lose money because of their decisions? Are you going to challenge the government on that? Or, well, or I can answer the go? one part of that question, and unfortunately I can't answer the okay, other part. Okay, fair enough. That's but, we, fine. but we have invested hundreds of millions of pounds okay. following government policy. Okay. We have followed all the rules. We've complied with all the regulations. Okay. Your eyes are <laughs> <laughs> talking at the moment. And Ineos have done the same. Yeah, and, I read and, something and about a one billion war chest. That Ineos have put a lot of money into this in good faith. Yeah. Um, and uh, I won't talk about the, the, the legality no, of it, of but, but I will say we have been treated appallingly. Okay. We have been treated appallingly. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you, you know, you might. Look, we, we, we would like Even a to, sorry, to move forward. A sorry note? So would that be enough? No, probably not. No. I, I mean, we, we, weren't even, we, we weren't even contacted between the first and second it's moratorium. It's disgusting, isn't you know? it? We, nobody knew, uh, certainly on, in our company, or I'm sure in the rest of the industry, that, that frankly, in response to a parliamentary question, uh, the Prime Minister banned fracking again. I mean, yeah. what, what way is that to treat people who invested hundreds of millions of pounds and, and the pursuing your policy? Well, that was part. That was part of a much longer interview, which you can find on the Car 26 YouTube channel. Lois Perry joins me now. Uh, Francis Egan seemed pretty angry. Yeah, he said that the government had had no communication with him in between Liz Truss lifting the moratorium and then it being taken off, uh, no, sorry, put back into place six weeks later. And in fact, there was no announcement, proper announcement. It was just in response to a question in Parliament that suddenly it was put back into place. They've put hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds in investment in. You can't run a country like that. You can't run an energy system like that. He certainly can't run a company like that. So, yeah, he was, yeah. He was upset. But you know what he's like. He was also upbeat and, and laughing as well. But. And, of course, Jim Ratcliffe, you know, yeah. I mean, who is, who is, I think, the richest Briton alive today, mm. uh, running Ineos. He's very much in the same position too. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. He didn't definitely say they'd launch a legal His action. His eyes did a lot of talking, though, Nigel, didn't yeah. they? No, and no, also, no, no. if you can't talk about something for legal reasons, then there's a legal reason for doing so. But I spent a lot of time in the north of England talking to all different types of people. Scott Benton MP, the, uh, the Blackpool, Blackpool MP, um, also Lee Anderson. That's another rollicking interview that will be available um, over the next couple of weeks on the YouTube channel. He said quite a lot of exciting things. And in terms of Joe Public, I mean, yeah. you know, we've had... We've had at least 20 years of school children being told this is the biggest challenge that we face yeah. and none of us want to be irresponsible about no. big challenges the world faces. But are the public becoming more sceptical about the net zero agenda? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was... Some people just said, I think it's a load of nonsense. Other mm. people just said, look, whether it's real or not, we don't care. We just want the government to think about us rather than ideology. I... The, people always think the government are out of touch, but at the moment it's extraordinary. And do we have any part? I mean, you know, you've got those stories. You've been on the streets in the north of England yeah. talking to people. Yeah, do it, have, it was great. Actually, do, do we have any polling data on this? Yeah, we do. So the year before last, when the when COP twenty six happened, um, it's, there was fifty eight percent of those who expressed an opinion in the Car twenty six YouGov poll said that they wanted a referendum on net zero. You don't normally want a referendum unless you are going against the status quo. But we did it a few months ago. You guys, it's gone up to 62% of those expressed an opinion. That's very high. People are extremely skeptical. I talked to um, Francis Egan about Blackpool because obviously they would have benefited yeah. very, very much from the fracking. And he said that the people would have either had free energy or low cost energy, or at the very least, they would have been supported. And of course, the energy costs would have come down for all of us. The argument about there being a set price for gas, he told me, was absolute nonsense. But one of the people that I spoke to at a food kitchen that I I went to that provides meals for people, not just homeless people, but people who have made the choice. They've heated their homes, so mm. they've eaten there. You know, there was a girl two weeks ago, a 19-year-old girl had a baby. The electric meter was about to run out. She went and worked as a street prostitute. Yeah, I mean, the electric meters. There's so much to this. Lois, yeah. thank you very much. Thank